morning, everybody. A hearty welcome to you all this morning. Uh, this is St. John Lutheran Church in Louisville, Kentucky, and we are a grace-based, Christ-centered community seeking to share the good news in what we do and what we say. And this is Reformation Sunday, which means that we have our red cloths and our red colors up today. Oops, I'm a little bit louder now. Um, does that sound okay to everybody? Yes. All right, good. Uh, and the red is the color of fire, the color of the Holy Spirit, which spreads and warms and gives life. So uh, we'll be getting back to just briefly a little bit more about Reformation Sunday. Uh, it is the time when we celebrate uh, the Lutheran Reformation. In um, 1517, Martin Luther uh, nailed the 95 Theses to the Wittenberg Church door and began a process of re-emphasizing uh, the fact that we are saved by grace through faith. And uh, so we don't have to earn our forgiveness or our entry into heaven. Uh, but are given to it by grace in the context of our trust for Jesus. Got a few announcements for you this morning. Um, first of all, please follow us on social media. Uh, it's a great way to share what we're doing here at St. John. And also, uh, we with our invitations are at 160 at this point. Now, we need to pick it up, y'all. You did a good job all the way up till about last month. And then, uh, so we need to be, uh, we got 40 to go till Christmas. So uh, invitations or stories about St. John or two St. John events. And you should find a card in your pew rack to uh, fill that out and put it in the offering plate if you've done that this week. Today at three o'clock at First Lutheran Church, uh, there will be a celebration of the 25th anniversary of the Joint Declaration on the Doctrine of Justification. And that is, that is where the Lutherans of the whole world, the Lutheran World Federation, and the Pontifical Council got together and said, basically, yes, we are all saved by grace through faith. Okay? So uh, it was uh, coming together on the basics of our faith. And there are differences in our churches and in uh, some of our teachings, but we have the same basis in the grace of God. And our faith is, uh, and our salvation comes uh, through, uh, through the grace of God. So uh, I'll be attending that uh, anniversary celebration. Anybody who wants to come is welcome to come. Bishop uh, Graham will be there as well as the vicar of the Archdiocese of Louisville. Yeah. <laughs> Next week is All Saints Day next Sunday. Uh, and so if you wish, you can uh, uh, bring, uh, write down people, uh, names of people who are beloved to you, who have passed on into heaven. And also we will be saying the names of members of the congregation who have passed on into heaven this calendar year. Put the cards uh, on the table at the entrances to the church and we will read them as part of the prayers we will ring a bell and light a candle for each person who is a member of the church, and then we'll have another candle and a bell for all the others that are listed. On November 10th is our Stewardship Sunday. We will be bringing in our uh, intentions of giving cards for 2025. You should be getting one of those in the mail in the next few days if you haven't already. So uh, please think and pray about your giving and, uh, and bring those cards on Sunday the 10th or mail them in if you can't make it on Sunday the 10th. Next week is also a day of like savings time. We fall back, that means we get an extra hour to sleep. So if you show up here at eight o'clock or at nine o'clock and nobody's here, that's why. <laughs> yeah, that's right, <laughs> be out there waiting for Nancy. Congregational meeting also November 10th. We'll vote on the budget, elect new council members, and we'll have a potluck afterward. So the sooner you finish the meeting, the sooner you get to eat. All right. And today we have a special temple talk from uh, Todd, uh, Todd Herbst. Uh, Todd, would you come forward at this time, please? And uh, he wants to, he is sharing with us. Uh, shall I tell him why you're up here? Sure. All right. Todd has been sober for a year. Thanks. All right, and this is my temple talk that I've been waiting a very long time to, to tell. Um, 
So uh, I will be explaining why I came to this church, how I came to this church, and the miracle that has happened because of this church. There'll be three miracles within my story. And so uh, a little background is I, I grew up in the Lutheran church. I loved church as a child. Um, Bible school, pancake breakfasts, the whole nine yards. And then when I turned 19, I uh, was diagnosed with a very severe mental illness. Uh, I still have it. I will have it for the rest of my life. And uh, it changed my life, and I became very, very angry with God. And I blamed God. And uh, I started to drink heavily and use drugs and became a alcoholic and a drug addict. And as most addicts will tell you, we're going to skip a whole lot of time. So <laughs> two decades for me oh, of working and drinking. And for any children out there or any young ones, please take this advice and do not do this. Um, so we skip a lot of time. And then I will tell you that I eventually drank myself into homelessness. And then this is when my first miracle happens. I could not get out of homelessness. I could not, I did everything I could. I couldn't, I couldn't work. I couldn't do it. And then my best friend and his mother and his father, and my best friend is out there, Bill, and his mother, Peggy, they took me in. And I was still drinking, and I was still not right in the head. But they took me in, and the miracle that happened is I, I lived with them for roughly two years, and I would go up to Peggy. Peggy can smile right now because she knows what I'm about to say. And I would thank her, and I would say, you saved my life. And she said, no, Todd, Jesus saved your life. And that didn't make much sense to me back then. But we kept going on, and Peggy got me into disability and got me my own home, which is where I live now. And we skip a few more years. And then uh, my second miracle happened. And this is a weird one, because most people would consider this a very bad thing, and I know this. But for me, it was a miracle, because God works in mysterious ways. And COVID happened. And COVID did a weird thing. It stopped uh, therapy. Everyone in the country wanted therapy. So instead of seeing my therapist every other week and group therapy and my shrink, I saw them every three or four months. And I needed to talk. I needed to get it out. So I went, okay, I'm not angry at God anymore. Peggy and Bill help with that. And uh, I bet I can go to church and talk, find someone to talk to. And I had already come here. So I came back here and I went to pastor and he said, you need a Stephen minister. And I said, okay, I'm all in. So he introduced me to a man named Sean who some of you may remember. He was here for about a year, year and a half. He was a Stephen minister, he sang on the choir, and he was a recovering alcoholic. And so he worked with me, and we talked a lot. And about four months in, he said, I'm not going to be your Stephen minister anymore. I'm going to be your sponsor, and we're going to get you sober. Now I'm going to get, my voice is going to rattle. Um, and I said, okay, I'm all in. Then I got a new Stephen minister, Mr. Mike right there, another person to talk to. Great. And we kept working, we kept working, and I kept giving myself to God, as you all well know, and I became the Bible school teacher, and I started helping the ladies in the kitchen, and just the last two days, I helped with Halloween, and I kept giving myself to God. And two or three days sober turned into weeks, and weeks turned into months, and finally months turned to six months the year before this, and then finally, as of this past Wednesday, I have a year sober. Yeah. And I'm telling you, it has been two decades, 
two decades, I never gave up. My mom would say this, you, you're, you never give up on things, but I just couldn't get it. Well, I finally got it, praise be to God. But I want you all to know, and this is really important to me, you all are of as much of the miracle as me and God, because you're my family now. I don't have family here other than Bill and Peggy, and you're my family now. You're part of the miracle. And that's my story. I believe Mike and Bill want to come up here for a second. Uh, you may, usually when you make your uh, first year of sobriety, um, there are a couple things that people give you. Yeah. Okay, what are they? <laughs> we'll put it near the cake. Put it, put it near the cake. Yeah. Tradition has when you hit a year, you get a medallion of some sort, a pin, gold pin. Uh, this is a one year pin. My dad was a alcoholic. He ended up with some 60 years of sobriety. This is the one that started it for him. First year of his sobriety. I know he'd want Todd to have this. Todd had all the alcoholics he could. I told him to keep this in the family, but he would. Thank you all. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Mike. All right. If we could have a brief prelude, uh, then. Um, as we prepare our hearts and minds for continuing to worship. Please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips, but have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. The cravings at war within us cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins, Draw near to us with grace in time of need, and turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, 
our Savior and Lord. Amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you're able. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace together. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Memphis. Peace, Bill. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Mary. Peace be with you. This is the... of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. Let it.
prayer. Let us pray. We'll get there. Don't worry. <laughs> Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel and bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength Hell and honor, blessing and glory are his. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing and honor and glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God, for the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. Alleluia. Be seated. It is time for the children and youth's message. Now, I uh, talked to Trey into helping me out with the children's message today. Talked to me until you told me. I told you into it. <laughs> yes, he was voluntold. We're going we're gonna to borrow Alex's chair here for a minute. Put it back. All right, so here's the thing. In the gospel lesson for today, um, Jesus heals a person who cannot see in the same way as the rest of us see. Now, we have some folks in our congregation who do not see in the same way that lots of other people see. They do not necessarily see as clearly with their eyes. And people tell me, though, and people in history say this too, that sometimes when you can't see with your eyes, you see with your spirit. So now Trey here can't see right now, okay? Um, does this make Trey less of a person if he can't see? No. Um, is it just as easy for him as it is for you and me to walk around if he can't see? No. So it's a burden if you can't see, right? Or if you can't walk, or if you can't hear, or if you can't talk. But is he whole? Yeah. Right. Every bit as much a whole person as someone who can see like most people can see. In fact, when um, I'm going to talk at some unfortunate length about this later today, <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Um, Bartimaeus, in the gospel lesson for today, cannot see with his eyes, but he can see who Jesus is with his spirit. Now, one way that we have of finding things out when we can't see, and we have folks who uh, are unable to see as we do in our midst, is we learn how to trust. Lots of the time when I have you all coming up to bring communion, to get communion, someone who 
doesn't see as well as walking along with someone who does. And that's nice because they are able to uh, walk along without stumbling and running into anything. But there's something about walking with someone who cannot see that gives you a feeling of something very deep. I found this out when I was in college and I used to go and uh, we used to play and hang out with kids uh, who couldn't see. So what we're going to do is you and I are going to lead Trey a little bit around here. We're going to lead up over there to the cake, which is for Todd after church, but no stealing the cake before church is over. Okay? All right, yeah. So here we go. Bring it up. Here we go. There you go. All right, we're going to take one step. We're going to take a step down right now. Got it? We're going to go left. Got a little narrow place. Here we go. It's all right. It's all right. Take a step. Take a step. There we go. All right, now we're going to turn around. And I'm going to have Alex lead you back. So all the time you've made fun of Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, come on over here. And take it. No, you, get, you take it by, by him like that. So he knows which way to go. Now keep him, keep him safe, all right? He's trusting you. You can tell him where you're going. All right. All right. Don't worry, Trey, I'm watching. <laughs> that doesn't give you much more confidence, okay. Yeah. All right. Can you bring him up the step? Yeah. Not quite. You have to turn more. There you go. I can you feel the step? There you go. That's it. Step up. There you go. Sit down in the chair again. All right. So when people, we have people in our midst who don't see as easily, don't walk as easily, don't hear as easily, they help us to see in new ways and hear in new ways and get around in new ways. Okay? Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for all the folks who are with us and uh, those of us who see in one way and see in another, who hear in one way and hear in another. Help us to see and hear you through each other. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Trey. You're a brave man. <laughs> Can you do it? Okay. It was not planned that I was also going to be elector. <laughs> <laughs> the first reading is from Jeremiah 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall, know, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Let us read responsibly the psalm of the day. God, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, Therefore we will not fear, fear though the, the earth, earth be moved, moved though, the though the mountains shake in the depths, depths of the sea. Though its waters rage and foam, 
through the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be shaken. God help. God shall help it at the break of day. And the nations rage and the kingdoms shake. God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regard the works of the Lord, what desolations God has brought upon the earth. Behold the one who makes war cease in all the world, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear, burns his shield with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. The second reading is from Romans 3, 19 through 28. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for though the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who is faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the Lord, by the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Listen, listen, God is calling to the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Listen, listen, God is calling to the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Jesus gave his mandate, share the good news. That he came to save us and set us free. Listen, listen, listen God, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. They came to Jericho as he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho. Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. <clears throat> Jesus stood still and said, call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, take heart, get up, he is calling you. 
So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, my teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Listen, 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 God is calling through the, the word inviting, inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Help us to be faithful, standing steadfast. Walking in your precepts, led by your word. Listen, listen, God is calling, through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Some of you may have seen or heard about the experiment that a couple of scientists did in 1999, where they got like six or seven people together. Some of them had black t-shirts on and some of them had white t-shirts on and they had a basketball. And they passed the basketball back and forth to each other. And your job, as you were watching, was to count the number of times that somebody uh, in a white t-shirt passed the basketball. Be very careful, now look, now watch. Number of times, the person in a white t-shirt passed the basketball. And people would come back with various numbers of times the basketball was passed, 17, 19, 21. Almost half of the people observing this experiment did not see, literally did not see the person in the gorilla suit come in front, pound their chest, and walk off. Don't see it. Now then somebody said, well, what about if you're carefully trained to look at the various details of an image? If you're very, uh, very intense, and so they got a bunch of radiologists together and they are very intense to look at x-rays to make sure they get the details because you can see whether there's disease or not in the x-rays. So they got 24 radiologists from Brigham Women's Hospital in Boston to examine x-rays of people's lungs to look for little white nodules on people's lungs. And they looked and they found the little white nodules and they looked very carefully, four of them, four of them saw the silhouette of a gorilla that had been imposed on the x-rays. We see what we expect to see. We see what we are told to see. We notice what we want to see. And what we don't want to see, we may not remember. In the gospel lesson for today, Jesus meets a man named Bartimaeus who cannot see in the same way that most people can see. Now, uh, this healing or uh, giving sight to Bartimaeus concludes the section of the Gospel of Mark from which our Gospel lesson for today has come and has been coming for the last several weeks. This section of the Gospel of Mark is called the journey to Jerusalem. The one before it is the ministry in Galilee. The one after it is Jesus' time in Jerusalem when, in which he ends up uh, dying on the cross and rising. So this is the journey to Jerusalem. The journey to Jerusalem also begins with a person who cannot see. 
People bring some, a man who cannot see to Jesus, and Jesus spits in some mud, spits in some dust, and makes mud out of his saliva and the dust. And he puts the mud on the guy's eyes, and the guy can, can see a little bit. He can see people walking around, but they look like trees, you know? So it hasn't really worked the way Jesus wanted it to. It hasn't completed the job, so Jesus gives it another go. And, and then the guy can see. He sees a little bit, and then he sees some more. Well, right after that, Peter kind of sees Jesus. The disciples don't really see Jesus very well in this section of the Gospel of Mark, but Peter kind of sees who Jesus is, because right after that, Jesus asks his disciples, who do you say that I am? And Peter says, you're the Messiah, and this is true. Jesus is the Messiah, the one anointed to bring God's power and presence and peace and hope and wholeness into the world. Well, right after that, Jesus tells his disciples what it means for him to be the Messiah. He says the Son of Man will be rejected by the chief priests and elders uh, and the scribes and suffer greatly and be killed and on the third day rise. This is a shock to Peter and the rest of the disciples because they have been expecting to see a Messiah who would lead them from glory into glory from victory into victory. This was the expectation of the Messiah that was written down at that time by uh, Jewish scribes. That was what they expected to see, and Jesus changed their expectations. Peter is so shocked that he rebukes Jesus. Jesus turns around and he rebukes Peter, and he says, you're not thinking the way God thinks. You're thinking the way people think, because God thinks differently than people think. God thinks differently than a path from victory to victory and glory to glory. Jesus gets everybody together and he says, listen, Christianity is not a spectator sport, okay? It's not where we stand over here and praise Jesus over there and we don't do anything. Christianity is where we take up our crosses and follow Jesus Luther talked about this. He talked about the theology of the cross and the journey of the cross. So for the rest of the section of the Gospel of Mark, for the rest of the journey to Jerusalem, Jesus is trying to teach his disciples what it means to follow the cross. And uh, one of the things we find out is that when we confront evil, we don't just do it on our own. We don't do it on our own power, not as individuals or as a community. We need the power of God. And so sometimes we have to get down on our knees and pray when we're confronting evil. And then he says, uh, uh, he says about people who are confronting evil, but they aren't a part of our group or our denomination or our, um, our class or our, uh, our even um, our nation, he says. If somebody is confronting evil, is casting out demons and they're not against us, then they're for us. So don't stop them. Three weeks ago, we heard about how Jesus expressed concern for some of the people in his society who were on the edges, on the boundaries, who did not have as much power as everyone else. And so he uh, addresses the situation of women who are divorced, which puts you in a very dangerous position in Jesus' day if your husband divorced you. It could do that. And then Jesus lifts up children as important when in his day, children had no importance, no legal standing outside of the family. And then two weeks ago, Jesus expresses the situation, uh, the realities between wealth and poverty. So Jesus is calling us to be concerned with folks who are on the edges, who are on the boundaries, who are not as powerful as we are. And throughout the journey, Jesus has predicted his death and resurrection three times. Three times he will be crucified and rise. And right after he mentions the third time he predicts his death and resurrection, James and John come to Jesus. And Pastor Scott shared with us last week about how James and John come to Jesus. They say, Jesus, what do you want Uh, Jesus, will you do for us what we ask? And Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? 
And James and John, after all of this, they still say, we want to sit at your right hand and at your left hand when you come into your glory. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations. You have found the path to glory. The way people think, not the way God thinks. So Jesus gets everybody together again. He says, listen, the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. And their leaders exercise tyranny and domination with respect to them. But it will not be so among you. Among you, the greatest shall be the least, and the leader will be the servant. So that all the different kinds of power that we have, power in our families, power in our communities, financial power, political power, military power, police power, popularity power, persuasion power, all those kinds of power are not ends into themselves so that we can just keep power. They are tools to be used always to serve. People talk about the power of God, the authority of God, the dominion of God, the overwhelming almightiness of God, and yet God's power comes from servanthood. Jesus says, for the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve to give his life as a ransom for many. If we're a Christian, we exercise leadership. We exercise it out of servanthood. Now this ransom thing, Jesus says he gives his life as a ransom for many. A ransom was the money that you paid in order to buy someone's freedom when they are enslaved. A ransom was the money you paid your enemy in warfare in order to get your prisoners of war back. Otherwise, they would be sold into slavery. <coughs> the implication being that we are enslaved. If not in body, then in mind. And not physically, then in our sight. Because we, our vision and our thinking is bound by the lies and illusions of the way that human beings function. They are bound by glory and domination. The idea that our safety lies only in our ability to threaten, that our dignity lies in our status. Jesus sets us free to follow the journey of the cross, the journey of hope, the journey of God's joy. Now, immediately after all of that, okay, now comes the story of Bartimaeus. And unlike the disciples who think they know so much, but only know a little bit, Bartimaeus, at least he knows he's blind. Bartimaeus, at least he knows he can't see. Bartimaeus is a beggar by the side of the road. In many ways, Bartimaeus is, is the ideal disciple. And in many ways, uh, we, the church, are like Bartimaeus. Luther wrote the last thing he wrote before he died. He was writing about interpretation of Scripture, how we understand who God is, how we understand the way God sees things, the way God thinks. And he says the very last words, we are beggars. That is true. We are tiny, mortal, dependent upon the grace of God. Bartimaeus cries out to Jesus. And what does he cry out for? 
It would be understandable if he cried out for money because he's a beggar and he could use some money so they could eat. Jesus, son of David, will you please give me a million dollars? This would be understandable, okay? Jesus, son of David, will you take vengeance on all the people that look down on me because I'm a beggar and I can't see? Uh, Jesus, will you take vengeance on all the people that don't treat me right because they think uh, there's something wrong with me because I uh, am different from them? Jesus, uh, will you give me some glory and people bow down to me? It's not what he asks. What does he say? Jesus, son of David, have mercy. The most powerful thing in all the universe. Mercy. For 20 centuries, we, the church, have been saying the same thing. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. People try to get Bartimaeus to quiet down. Shh. He's making a ruckus. Shh. He, he, will not, he will not be an asset to our congregation. He will not help our movement to move forward into victory. He will be an anchor. He will drag us down. Don't, don't, don't let him get too much into, uh, too much into uh, the community. He'll be a problem, I tell you. But uh, Bartimaeus, like a good disciple, does not quit does not stop, is persistent, and he keeps on crying even louder, Jesus, son of David, have mercy. Jesus, son of David, have mercy. You know, outside here on our sign, such as it is, humble as our sign is, without like fireworks and sparkles, but it says, all welcome. Okay. When we decided to put that on the sign, we talked about it at council. We didn't just put it up there. And I said to council, do not put that up there unless you mean it. Don't put it up there unless you mean it. Okay, Because some, some churches, they don't have a sign. This is all welcome up there. That's okay. They may have uh, theological or scriptural uh, um, commitments that prevent them from being fully welcome to everybody. They're wrong, but they may have it. And they have integrity. They have integrity, right? Disagree, but integrity. Don't be putting a sign like that up there unless you mean it. Because some churches put a sign like that, say, all oh, welcome. You come in, and yes, you're welcome to come in, but you can't read. You're welcome to come in, but you can't teach Sunday school. You're welcome to come in, but you can't be a pastor. Don't put it up there unless you mean it. Jesus tells his disciples, his own disciples, that have been trying to get Bartimaeus to be quiet and go away, he tells his own disciples to go over there and call him forward. Jesus gets us to come to you. Some of you may have felt at one time or another that you weren't welcome in the church, that you didn't have a place, and Jesus sends all of us to say, take heart, take heart. Jesus is calling you to be here. Jesus is calling you to be here. Bartimaeus springs up and he throws his cloak aside. Little bitty detail, but he has like nothing at all in the whole world. He's a beggar. He has nothing. And yet he throws his cloak aside. When two weeks ago we heard about a guy who couldn't give up his many, many possessions. Bartimaeus has very few. He gives up his cloak and he runs to Jesus what do we have to give up to run to Jesus? What ideas, what pride, what practices, what addictions, what fears? Comes Jesus, and Jesus says the same thing that he says to James and John. He says, what do you want me to do for you? And Bartimaeus says, Lord, I would like to see again. I think that's why we come to church. Because we've glimpsed something out there, most of us. Maybe just even in the form of um, curiosity, but we have glimpsed something powerful and beauty, beautiful and holy and terrifying and life-giving. And we want to see again. 
I want to see. This is what it means to be a Reformation church. We, 500 years ago, turned back towards an emphasis on salvation by grace through faith, and we cling to that truth. But that's not all there is to see. And nowadays, we walk a journey of growing and understanding in our time and our place what it means to be a Christian, what it means to carry the cross, what it means to follow Jesus. And so we continually pray to Jesus, Jesus, will you please help us to see? Thanks be to God. confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for he us and for, for our salvation. salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, 
in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit or kneel. Challenged by God's word in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and the whole creation. Lord of all, we give thanks for the whole church throughout the world. Open wide the paths toward unity between denominations so that all followers of Christ may join in shared worship and mission. God of grace, hear our prayer. Renewing God, as the dying leaves display their beauty, we are reminded that nature's cycle of life includes and requires both life and death. Instill in your people a mission of preservation and appreciation for trees, animals, and waterways threatened by climate collapse. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, in the spirit of reformation, we pray for all who cry out for relief from systemic oppression. Bring peace to Ukraine, Israel, Palestine, Sudan, and Congo. Guide our elections with wisdom and honesty and protect everyone from any violence. May the hearts of those who occupy seats of power be reformed so that peace becomes the center of our life together. God of grace, hear our prayer. Comforting God, be with all who are sick, suffering or grieving in our own community and beyond. Surround them with the promise of your love, comfort and grace, especially those we name now before you, whether silently or aloud. God of grace, hear our, hear our prayer. Divine guide, continue to challenge this community to be ever reforming in our ministries and outreach efforts. Make us faithful to your eternal word, same love from the dawn of time as it is expressed in new ways every day. God of grace, hear our prayer. Almighty God, in, church, in Christ's resurrection, you ensure that the, the life be wrenched away Death cannot win the day. May the truth of your saving grace through faith sustain our hope for life in you. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the saving grace you freely give, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us thank God for our many blessings with our offerings.
the harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and dreams of all, unite them with the prayers we offer. Grace our table with your presence, and give us a foretaste of the peace to come. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, you alone are holy, you alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We, we praise, praise you, you O oh God. God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We, we bless, bless you, you O oh God. God. We give you thanks for your dear son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank, we thank you, you, O God. God. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ, Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering within this meal, among your people and throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. Amen. Lord, teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
Please be seated.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 Follow Jesus. Sharing Jesus through worship, learning, caring, and service. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Anybody who wants cake, we're celebrating Todd's one year of sobriety with sober cake in, All the, right. in the overflow. <laughs>